Yes, we are. All right. So, uh, Friday I ended up seeing Pacific Rim. Chris, you just saw it today, right? Yeah. About three hours ago. Three hours ago? Oh, oh yeah, four. yeah. I forgot. Somewhere on that side. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm mixed about this movie versus everybody else who just fucking... who's fangasming over it. To be honest, I'm mixed. Uh, the quickest and most unspoiler way to say it is this is a very silly, stupid anime. Essentially. It, it, oh, yeah. It's, it's not a movie to go into expecting a lot of thought, and it's just something you go in to see a lot of action in it, and... You I don't know what, mean, honestly... There's you know not even this, that much action in it, either. You know what this movie is? This movie is Sharknado with a budget. Yeah. It's just, it's really stupid, it's really silly, and if you're in the right mindset where you enjoy the fact that it's kind of cheesy and smaltzy all over the place, then you enjoy it. When we get to the spoiler half of this, remind me of the Sharknado connection, and I'll even make that connection deeper. Yeah. Because <laughs> they pull off some of the same shit. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's, yeah, there's, like, moments that are actually identical yep. between the two movies. Yep. Uh, I hope you're thinking of the same part I am, too. I think probably, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to go down to the description of this movie, but uh, basically this movie is about a uh, dimensional rift opens up in the Pacific Ocean uh, between two world or the world of Earth and this other, this alien foreign dimension. And uh, over the next, I think it was, what, 20, 20, 20 years? I think it's seven. Seven or twelve, because they mentioned being in year oh, they go, seven of the Kaiju War. Yeah, they well they did a they did twenty twenty. Then they do like five years later or something like that. Because after that's not true. I know they mentioned it's being in the middle of the Kaiju War, mm -hmm. and that I remember when we re meet Raleigh, he mentioned it's been five years since he's piloted. So I can't. I, I'm trying to remember. It's between the years, the year, It's be, either seven or about twelve. It's somewhere. Yeah, it's either seven or twelve much. years. I, I'm I'm gonna go with twelve because I think it's you know, uh, twenty twenty is where uh, Raleigh is actually doing his piloting, and then five years after that is when he rejoins. Probably somewhere. Around there. So I think it's about twelve years in, but uh, basically to combat the uh, the kaiju. We created the uh, Jaegers, which are basically giant robots of awesome killy fighties. Yeah. And basically the whole story is, ba uh, you know, them trying to combat these aliens. Dimensional beings, whatever the hell you want to call them. Yeah, and there's different teams. The whole way the Jaeger works is that it has pilots, mm -hmm. uh, but one pilot wouldn't be enough. It's too much of a strain on the neural system because they mimic the, the user's movement. So two pilots basically mind merge with one another. Yep. And that's why a lot of the teams that you'll see are teams of brothers, teams of family, or teams of uh, husband and wife sort of deal. Because they're more compatible with each other. Yeah. So uh, it, it all comes down to how in sync you are. The more in sync you are with your, your pilot, the more effective your robot is and the better fighting force you are. Which I actually like that gimmick. That it wasn't a bad gimmick at all. No, it was, it, it was only kind of there, though. Like... Here's one of the things. This, this isn't getting too much into spoilers. I guess maybe it will. So maybe, maybe I'll hold off on that. <laughs> so, but no, I, I do like the gimmick for the most part. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. Uh, it didn't, to me, it didn't feel forced. No. no that, it that it had to do it. I, I thought there were other things that happened in this movie that felt way too forced. But well, this thing, I was, pa I, was, I was passing on. I was like, all right, this is okay. Even though it's only seven years ahead of our current time schedule, I don't think that's possible, but okay. <laughs> I feel most of the stuff that comes off as forced is, I think, by and large, intentional. I really do think I don't they're know. trying to get... There's some that I think is unintentionally funny, but there's some of it that's to just me, so stupid. They took it... Uh, to me, they took this movie very seriously. To me, it came off they were trying... They It was trying to take itself seriously, but yet still make fun of itself. And I don't think this movie did it that it did it that well i i think because I, it was uh, there was a lot of groaning moments for me in this movie to where there I, are a lot of those that i also had quite a few like so ridiculously stupid it's like i had actually had a laugh out loud moment in the movie 
uh, that we can get into a little bit later. But I, I feel like a lot of it, it's so, like, it, it's just, you have to be self-aware when you're writing these lines. Like, Guillermo del Toro is the director. I, I, I can't think of too many things of his off the top of my head. But, I, I mean, I haven't known him before to have the reputation of being a really bad director. No, but every once in a while, good directors put out a stinker. They put out a stinker, but I think this is intentionally a stinker because of it being a love letter to well, kaiju movies and having so many connections to anime as it is. I know one thing I do know about Guillermo del Toro is he reads manga. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to imagine that translation also probably applies if he watches anime. So I think that some of the things in here are probably just tropes he's picked up that he's just applied to the movie. Like, there's... There's points where characters will say, like, really stupid lines. And, like, you just sit there and, like, yeah, that line is awful. But you're, like... I, I don't think, you know, going to... Uh, this is going to be a spoiler, but there's this one line where they use... It's, let's do this together. Yes. And I'm just... I audibly, out loud, fucking with... Loud enough that everybody in the theater can hear me. I groaned at that. It's like Power Rangers. You know? Yeah, it like, was. <laughs> you, you, that's, you know, that's part of the movie. I think part of the... the uh, mystique wrapped around it and that that's why a lot of people are kind of digging it is because it's so cheesy like it, it, it has is. a lot of those moments where you're just like oof I, in another movie this would be a downer but I feel like this movie is a weird I thought it was a downer even in the, this movie like you know I, I'm so finicky when it came to this movie like I, I hated where they said let's do this together and I love the parts where they had to, they basically said the power they were using before using every power rocket punch yeah I fucking ate that shit up but when it, it came to the, the really silly stupid you know, shit. I just couldn't do it, you know? Here's one thing I'll absolutely agree on. This movie, if it was its intention to be so stupid it's good, has difficulty crossing the border or balancing on the line between that and just being so stupid it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Because the first act of this movie was so stupid it's stupid to me. I just, I couldn't stand it. The costumes just looked fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All of the acting was just all over the place bad. I didn't like any of the acting throughout this whole movie. Yeah, I, I I literally thought the the little the girl uh the little girl who plays uh there are flashbacks about the 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 Me- Mako Mako, uh I thought the little girl played Mako better than the actual actress who plays her throughout the rest of the movie. Played I, I'm just shocked they managed to find a little girl with as obnoxious a voice as the actual Mako. <laughs> yes, <laughs> every character in this movie has something that's really weird with them. Like the main character. Uh, Raleigh is played by Charlie Hunnam, but I'm 90% sure it's actually played by Zach Braff. <laughs> and they just didn't want to pay him, so they used a different name. Because I swear, you put black hair on this guy, he's Zach Braff. And I could not look at c- in certain scenes of this movie and not be like, why is JD here? Um, Where's Turk? Idris, Idris Alba's in the movie, or as I like to call him, Stringer Bell, because he only is going to have ever one role for me. Um, and Stringer Bell in this movie... Not not his finest role. No. I, I think a lot of it is a script. He's 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 put into the role of like the strict military. He tries. Like, Johnson, you 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 saved the day, but you disobeyed orders to do it. He and tries. I take that <laughs> It's like it, he has to be so angry. Like his character is the most irrational douchebag. Fuck ever. yeah, he is. Shitty and mean. And half the wanna, stuff he does like, doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're just like, why are you being this shitty and mean? <laughs> I don't understand it. Like he just gets angry and yells at a lot of things. He's like the uh, the the uh, chief in any police movie you've ever seen. Exactly. He's just he's the guy who's just like I can't handle these. Loose cannon cops. Yeah. Except the loose cannons in this movie are, are people who are like, oh, I'm going to save this ship full of people. <laughs> He's yeah. just like, oh, I told you not to danger the mission. That's the Aussies, not the fucking <laughs> other guy. He's just, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's very strange in that way. Um, he plays Stacker Pentecost as his character yeah. name. I love these names, by the way. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know half of their names uh, when I left the movie. But looking, going through back through IMDb, I'm just like, these were their names. <laughs> there was a Doctor Newton Geyser or Gisler. Gisler. Oh, I had to get to him. Uh, <laughs> God. Doctor Newton, played by Charlie Day. Um, awesome. I love Charlie Day. 
Um, I, do not, I do not like Charlie Day. I do. I, I can I can tolerate him in very small amounts, but I hated him in this. Movie. He was he amazing just, in Horrible Bosses. He's okay. I, I like him in it. I, I, it's it's. It's just a matter that he just his voice gets on my nerves very quickly. Yeah, it can. So if if I have to listen to him for a very prolonged amount of time, it just sounds like it gets higher and higher. I imagine <laughs> I imagine the same way. I sound a lot. Like, but oh my god! When it comes to this movie, voice, <laughs> puberty. Charlie Day plays the same character he was in as he was in in Horrible Bosses, except well, he plays he's a the scientist. Same character and everything. He's yeah, like, he like, does. The he's the hyperactive. Erotic, yeah, uh, hyperactive, kind of cowardice, over enthusiastic. Yep. Yeah, he's the same guy and everything. Not, not bad. I think if you like Charlie Day and anything else, you'll like. Him. Uh, I didn't like him here. <laughs> I, was not, I was not a fan of him here. Uh, main female lead is uh, played by Rinko Kukichi Mako, and it's so weird because I had to listen to an interview of her to be certain. Mm-hmm. And it's her actual voice. She does not talk, I believe, with any put-on accent. And it's so weird because this is the only, like, the, the most recent event I could think of where I'm like, wow, stereotypes really do exist. Because she sounds like a family guy impersonator doing an Asian woman's voice. Like, oh no, Rowie, we have to hurry up and save the Pacific Rim. Like, it's so, it's so, like, the accent is so... Well, that, and she speaks so softly sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's... Typical for, you know, uh, Japanese and Chinese culture that they, you know, women are very soft-spoken. But for a film, you kind of don't want to do that. Because she's, there are some things where you're just like, what, what did she say? Damn it. Because it better not have been important because I didn't hear a damn thing she said. You're like, oh, she's like a Pentecost is dying. <laughs> it's just every time I heard her voice, I was just like, wow, that is... It's, I thought she was putting on a fake accent. I was waiting to see her on, like, David Letterman. She's just like, yeah, so I thought Pacific Rim was a pretty good <laughs> Just comes out with this very well, distinguished British yeah. accent. <laughs> <laughs> she just put on, like, a super racist accent for the movie. But I'm like, no, nah, it's how she actually talks. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Her voice can get a little grating throughout the movie as well, but... I, I just wasn't a fan of any uh, like I don't I don't know if I don't know many of these actors outside of the guy who plays uh, Herc. Uh, I didn't know many of these actors. Uh, there's two actors you should... and Charlie Day. Okay, there's Charlie Day. There's also Ron Perlman who's in this. Movie. Yeah, I got Ron Perlman, as, but I don't give him. A, I don't. As Hannibal Chow, <laughs> I Hannibal Chow was the one point in the movie where I was like, this is far. Too on the nose, Guillermo del Toro. This is too self aware well, of yourself being stupid. Have you seen Hellboy, uh, The Golden yes. Army? Or, no, I've seen the first Hellboy. I haven't seen much of the second one. Okay. It, it, the way he dr- was dressed and the way he looked reminded me of that movie. With yeah, those, uh, I mean, golden, pl- or those golden boots or whatever silver boots yeah, that he it wore. Was, it, was, it was like classy dress shoes, but he had like gold plating on them. Yeah. Those were awesome. I'd like to have those. And then he had, <laughs> um, he had like big, weird kind of robot monocle fucking looking things over his eyes. Mm-hmm. And he wore like a big, loud red suit. And he's just so unnecessary to the movie. Oh, fuck yeah, he was. He has, like, his. his well, that's. We, we needed him for the B plot, you know? Yeah, they. they well, the C, B or C or D plot that they had going on in this movie. There's so fucking it's, many. They had to have him there in some aspect, but he is he's very much a uh, a character I was not a, fun, uh, a fan of. Um, but I think at this point we probably might want to hold off on talking too much further because I think yep. we're going to start getting into spoilers at this point. But one thing I do want to say, I think this movie would have done a lot better if they would have cut out like 20, 30 minutes of this movie. That's strange because I actually think this movie could have done being more. I don't think so. I to me I feel like they 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 stay too long on plots that or they the the problem maybe I think manage time then because I feel like my one of my biggest problems is that the movie starts off extremely slow. I feel like we should have gotten one full kaiju fight before we got to the kaiju fight we did start the movie with. I still liked how this opened up. I liked I actually liked the first ten minutes because it kind of it, it, other than that it blue balled me. Because it's basically like, oh, we're going to see the awesome scene, and then a lot of talky bits after. <laughs> um, 
but I liked the opening scene. I liked every there. I you know I liked the kaiju fights, but after that, I other than that, I wasn't a fan. Um, I I felt a lot of the the pl- uh, you know B plots were kind of shoehorned in. A lot of things happened for no reason. A lot of the decisions that were made don't make sense. Uh, I just I don't understand why some things happen in this movie. Mm-hmm. They they don't make any sense at all, and you'll understand why if you stick around for the uh, spoiler part. <laughs> but right now, I really can't get into it without going in through major spoilers. So, uh, if you want to, uh, do we give our gradients here, or do you want to wait till? The yeah, end? Uh, I'd want to do it here for anybody who watches. You know, if anybody wants to only watch the this part for basically our recommendation. But yeah, I'd I'd, I'd rather give it here than at the end. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say this is a solid uh, a solid rent. If you have the uh, sound system to make this thing actually awesome for you. Yeah, sound is kind of a big aspect in yeah. here. Um, I would probably give it a B plus. Okay, so you're you're probably going a little bit higher than than uh, you you view it a little bit better than I did. I, I definitely do. We'll get into it a little bit more, but... Um, On a side note, this I, movie I, is tanking, apparently. It's not doing as well as they'd like. Uh, uh, fortunately, Grown Ups 2 is apparently getting a lot of money. It's whooping its ass. Uh, uh, I think the last I saw was like, uh, Grown Ups 2 hitting $34 million uh, opening day or weekend or something like that, versus this thing is only like 14 or something. And considering it looks like it was a very expensive movie with a fuck ton of advertising, this may end up being a bomb. Yeah. Well, this movie was two hundred and forty-seven million dollars, something like that. God, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Sharknado probably costs like ten grand in a fucking <laughs> like buffet table. What the uh, they, fuck? They, they gave the animators a box of Skittles or a bag of Skittles, and that's pretty much all they needed for that movie. They just gave him some fucking gummy sharks and were like, have at it, man. Uh, wow. $250? I mean, I guess that's what you get when you have them fucking doing, like, CGI Tokyo, but for fuck's sake. I think sake, it was $250, 250 million. I, I, um... 250 is ridiculous. Let me see. Uh, let me... I just want to double check. So let's say it cost, um... 190 and made 90 million. Okay, so it's gone. It's increasing. Okay. Over time. 190 um, is not as bad. If it was 250, I'd be just. I'd, I'd be mortified. I'd be like, you guys spent almost $300 million on this movie? Yeah, uh, Wikipedia. Because you have to imagine with advertising costs on top of that. Yeah, Wikipedia saying that's uh, what. View says in the chat room is correct. Yeah. But yeah, it's just uh, this movie's not that bad to be losing to. I don't think it's a bad movie at all. I just think it's an unfortunate movie in that the people are going to enjoy it are not necessarily going to realize they should see it. Mm hmm. Like. I also. I'd like to explain something really quick, too. I went into this movie on 24 hours of no sleep. So I kind of, I, I, it's one of those things, uh, well, I'm going to find out the spoiler when Chris talks about this movie some more. If my views were swayed on basically me being cranky when I came into this movie. I mean, because Chris, you know I've been pumped for this movie for the past, yeah, you, like, fucking eight months. You, you were excited. I came <laughs> into this movie completely like, eh, it's a movie I'll watch this weekend. I can't wait for our IPD next weekend. Oh, god I'll... damn that fucking movie, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... So, yeah, I, I'm probably going to give this movie another viewing. And I might give a follow-up uh, just myself on what I actually, if my anything changes. But right now, I'm going to go off of uh, my first opinions on this movie. Fair enough. Ready to get into some spoilers, Chris? Yes. Let's spoil the shit out of this thing. Okay. So, there is... Uh... I think a point that is the highlight of the film, which is when we first see two monsters attack at once. Yes. I, I would say it's the best action scene in the movie. Um, Ex- a, a, a little bit of a heads up, though. 
it gets it, a little it, stupid. It does. But it's also awesome. Um, but there are four mechs in this series, four Jaegers. Yeah. Um, there's one piloted by our main characters, one piloted by a father and son Aussie team, one piloted by, like, a, I think it's a husband and wife or a Russian, Russian team. team. Yep. And then a bunch of a Chinese triplet team who has a big robot that has three arms. I love the um, designs of these fucking things, by the way. The, the monsters and the fucking Jaegers look amazing. The Russian and Chinese team are so anime, it's not even funny. Like, yeah. they literally come into the movie to do their one special thing and then, and then die. die. That's it. <laughs> like, it's, so much, it's like in an anime when you see, like, a side villain come in and he's just like, I need to sh- I shoot arrows out of my eyeballs or something like that. And he does it twice and the hero's like, oh, I, f- I found a way to counter that. And like, ah, that's it. That's basically these characters. They're like, let us which, show you our thundercloud formation, which is just them spinning their buzz saws. <laughs> it really get so dangerous about that. Well, I think th- that fight should have been longer before it, we had to bring in the uh, the Aussies. gypsy. I can't remember any fucking robot name. It's gypsy something gypsy. strike something. I think Crimson Tide is the Chinese one. Crimson I Typhoon, I think it was. Oh, there you go. I didn't even get that right, and I don't even remember what the uh, Chern- Russian one was. It's like it's something a take on Chernobyl or something like that, because that thing looks like a giant nuclear reactor. Um, oh god, damn! Fucking certain lines of this movie. Uh, we're analog. Shut up. <laughs> They're uh, all digital. We're analog. But there's that big fight, and the fight moves into the city, and basically uh, the gypsy robot takes out both monsters. And after it's taken out the first one, it finishes that fight in the port. It then comes into the fight the next monster, and it has by far the greatest moment in the movie to me. You just see the striker or, or the gypsy robot coming up on him, holding a tanker ship and using it as a samurai sword. It was so over the top stupid. I busted out laughing. It it was completely that perfect level of so dumb. It's awesome. For you, I can see it. it For me, it irritated the shit. Because when I saw that, I literally looked over to my uh, my friend and said. Boats don't have that kind of structural integrity to do that. It's not about the structural integrity. I know it's, it's not. It's about the fact he's really a fucking tanker. I know it's, it's like not, but here's the thing. When it comes to a movie, you're supposed to be able to suspend your disbelief, you know, if it's a good movie. And that uh, that scene just annoyed the fuck out of me. I mean, that, we, hold on, right hold on. Minute. We've a, no, no. We've established he has a goddamn motherfucking sword attached to his arm, yet he still brings a boat to the fight. He didn't need the goddamn boat. He's got a goddamn sword. But the boat's cooler. I don't care. He has a fucking melee weapon. He doesn't need a a boat bat. <laughs> This is what I mean when I say that the movie comes off like shark to put. There's just stuff that you're just like, this doesn't, there's no way this could work. But they're like, we're going to do it because it's going to look really cool on screen. Yeah, uh, there's your, thank, thank you for reminding me, shark to puss, or uh, not shark to puss, uh, Sharknado. Sharknado. Uh, there's a scene in Sharknado where a guy cuts a shark in half with a yeah. chainsaw. Exactly. In this exactly. movie, we got a kaiju being cut in half by a sword wielded by a uh, Jaeger. Awesome scene in both movies. <laughs> That's the sort of thing. It's it's just a ludicrous, over the top thing that either hits a moment where you're like, you're either gonna appreciate because it it's so silly and over the top that you're like, that's awesome, or you're just gonna be like, that's stupid. And it really is gonna go either one way or the other. It it just comes down to how much you like things that you're like, that was really silly, but I don't care. It was amusing because it was bad, or it was awesome because it was you know over the top. I. I'm a large kaiju fan. I, you know, I'm a, I've seen and own every Godzilla ma- movie, ex- uh, including the fucking uh, U.S. made one, which, um, that a fucking abomination. Um, but I'd like to see uh, Del Toro. Is that who did this one? Yeah. I'd like to see him do Godzilla. <laughs> I, th- I think he can pull Godzilla off. Even though uh, they're already making making it, and I don't think he's attached to it at all. I have no idea. It's a shame, but um, I don't, there's just certain things in this movie that just you're, uh, you know, annoy the shit out of me. There's the uh, there's this whole subplot of the uh, the uh, guy playing by played uh, by um, 
Idris Alba's character. Idris, yeah. Um, you mean Idris Alba? Idris Alba. Yeah, Idris Alba is the, the person. Yes, I know, but I'm trying to remember his character's name in this movie. Just call him Stringer Bell, because it's the only Pent- one ever. Pentakill. Pentakill. <laughs> Pentakill. I, I think it's Pentecost, isn't it? Pentecost. Uh, Stacker Pentecost. Yeah. Pentecost and the uh, and uh, Mako. I mean, am that, I crazy in that I figured out what was happening between them in like the first five seconds of them being on screen with one another? Well, yeah, it's well, it's not that hard to figure out what's going on. But the thing is, is that um, he's you know the whole movie is basically you cannot pilot, and then it's you can pilot, and then it's like no, you cannot pilot anymore, and then he's like okay, now you can pilot because we've lost four or uh, five pilots. I, I, you, I, why? Why do we need a fucking whole subplot that's just mind-numbingly boring for me? To where it, it all he's gonna do is just go back on everything he says. It doesn't put him in the best light as a character. Um, he's an idiot. You, you you don't really get much reason to like it. It's just a lot of things in his character just seem to be like sudden. Like here's the thing: I, I look at this movie as though it we're like a twelve episode anime series, mm-hmm. because that's kind of the way it feels structured. You kind of get your big climax episode in around episode ten, and you have to do your finale. You know, like if you if you spaced it out, this is the storyline that could easily fit something like that. But yeah. because this is fit into a two-hour movie, it's only about two hours, 15 minutes or something like two that. Two hours, 11 minutes. Um, because it's that, you know, sort of a sort of a time frame, they kind of have to put the plot points in there, but then have him get over it really quickly. Like, it's a big deal throughout the movie that he seems to have some, you know, well, he's got radiation poisoning from what yeah. he put when he was a pilot in a mech. Because he, like, he was a solo pilot. Well, he solo piloted once, I think. No, the originals they solo piloted, but they didn't do it for very long because oh, okay. of the effects that had, that it had on people. Okay. And he was one of the originals who that are still alive that have solo piloted. Okay. Um, and shit, where does it go? Oh, he he's got this medicine he has to keep taking for his poisoning, and then they reveal like, oh, well, the reason I have to take it is because I was a solo pilot, but I could never pilot again. And then five minutes later, he's like, I'm gonna pilot, pilot again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you're well, doing this because you need to die. <laughs> what, what annoys me is like, uh, okay, we've established that, uh, you know, um, oh, that even annoys me. I just thought of something else that was stupid. Um, the whole movie, he's like, we, we find uh, Riley, and he's like, uh, we, we're, we're, we set up candidates for your, for, to be your pilot, you know, to be your co-pilot, which are basically the three Asian guys, cause, and one other dude. Because don't we don't they, see they, actual co- contenders for it. Because the, the, he fights people, remember? Uh, and the, he's like trying to find somebody who melds with him, you know, uh, movement-wise, movement as far as fighting. And uh, we don't, I don't think any of the people he fights are actual just random people that they, they have on a list. I think those are actually the other pilots. No, uh, Maybe you coming off as a little bit racist, but I'm pretty sure there's three other characters who just have to be Asian as well, because the center is in Hong Kong. They wore the same red jumpsuits. They didn't really wear jumpsuits. Yeah, they did. I could have swore they did. If not, oh well. I Like I said, I went into this movie 24 hours tired. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, some details may have been lost upon me, but to me, they <laughs> look the same. <laughs> Because I know there was one white guy he fought at the beginning, and then an Asian guy, and then he fought uh, Mako. Um, but during that whole thing, we find out, you know, that she's, uh, I think even before that, we find out Maiko was supposed to be his co-pilot. Uh, that's she told him. a really creepy stalker fangirl. That's, yeah. her, that's the way she comes off at first. She does. She she feels typ- typical anime. Yeah. Like, where she watches them through the, uh, the, uh, the people and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, we find out that, that, uh, his, the character said, that, you know, uh, you're going to be his pilot. And then when they find him, he's like, you cannot be his pilot because of the things that happened, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. And then she becomes his pilot. The weirdest part is after, because they explain the whole reason they're doing, like, the combat is because 
The combat's not supposed to be, I'm going to beat you. It's Mm-mm. supposed to be a dialogue. It's supposed yep. to show how in sync these two people can be. Yep. And because she gets so in sync with him, you know, they're like, oh, well, that must be she's the best candidate. And Alba's like, she will not be your candidate. You will meet your pilot today at two. And then two comes around, and she walks into the room, and like, oh, I guess Idris Elba just made you the candidate after all. <laughs> it's just one of those things, like... I see. I don't. Under, I don't understand why that's in the movie. If that's a, if you know, none of that made. None of that had a point to it. You know, at all. Yeah, and I, they could entire her entire plot is is wrapped up basically at the end. Like they find that I guess when you meld your your memories, you, you see everyone else's entire life basically. Yeah, you and live the memories of the other person constant while you're piled in a mech. So it's possible to have one person have a memory come up. And that will put you off sync with somebody else. And the, the whole thing is you're not supposed to, quote unquote, chase the rabbit. You're not supposed to get lost in what is a memory. Mm-hmm. She gets lost in the memory of where she was a survivor of a kaiju attack after her family was killed. Uh, and she got very close to being killed by a kaiju. The entire fight basically took place a block away from her. And she, you know, she has this trauma. She's constantly being warned. Vengeance is not the correct path. Things like that. She gets over it in this scene. And never comes up again. It's never an issue again that she's going to get lost in her memories. It's well, they 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 uh, they do uh, they do ground that team uh, because of that incident, and only put them back on the field because they lost two mechs and five pilots. Yes. Which that whole fucking thing doesn't make any sense to me either. You see two level four kaiju. By the way, they rank these by one to four. Um, actually, one to five, but you don't get a number five until the very fucking end of this movie. But uh, two level fours come out of the uh, the throat, uh, basically, aka the rift in the uh, space-time contingency dimension vortex thing. And uh, to respond to that, they send out three. They sp- they send out the Russian team, the the uh, Chinese is it Chinese or the Japanese team? The Chinese. Chinese team, and the um. And the uh, Aussie team. Um, and I don't even know why they sent the Aussie team when they don't even want that thing damaged. So that thing stands, you know, stands in the back. And the uh, other two go up against this thing. And they're getting their ass handed to them. And yet, the commander is still sitting in his office watching this go down. And he's like, they'll figure it out. Matt, uh, oh, oh, shit. No. <laughs> they got this. I mean, clearly one... Level four is whooping their ass, but surely the second that we know is in the area won't get involved. So uh, I'm just like, why don't? Why are you not sending him in now? Because you're going to lose this, and he knows it, you know. Because he—they're both getting their ass beat. He doesn't send him in until both of them go down. Yeah, he could have avoided all of that just by sending in Gypsy. Most likely, but you know they didn't want them out there because they almost. Gypsy does, you know, to give him a little bit of credit, Gypsy, because Mako kind of goes overboard, uh, almost does destroy the entire complex. Because, yes, she does. You know, while she's lost in her dream, she's slowly activating the arm cannon, which could, you know, blow up everything. And I can but it wouldn't have fired like, because she was... Ready. It wouldn't have fired because she didn't say the name before it. Yeah, she didn't. <laughs> no. like, arm cannon to fire! Plasma... It's the plasma cannon. But, uh... Yeah, it's just things like that irritate me that were that about this movie um the whole fight scene that you were talking about where they the guy brings the boat in mm-hmm. uh gypsy brings the boat in uh there's a there's a part in that scene where his fist goes through a building and knocks one of those little pendulum things that was the one that was the that a, part where i was just like that why are we well, doing this I was, I was like why do we have to see that i mean if they would have removed that i would have been happier you know even though the boat's still there but I was like, what's the, what's the <laughs> point of this? There's nothing. Just, like, look at our CGI. That's all that that like, was. Look how cool it is. That's we it. Made a, we made a CGI fucking marble thing for only $2 million. <laughs> it doesn't... There's a lot of things that, that'll happen in this movie that really don't need to be there. I think they could have dropped um, 90% of the, uh, the Mako uh, tied to the Commander... Uh, backstory, I th- or, uh, back, not backstory, but confrontation. They could have dropped the very forced I ha- the Aussie I hate the American kid one, um, which just comes out of nowhere. He's just an asshole to be an asshole. That's yeah. why, again, again, it's so anime. They're like, you got the pretty boy <laughs> asshole who. Well, I knew there was going to be a. Like. I knew there was going to be that kind of a character in this movie. 
Because there always is, you know? There has to be some sort of human antagonist to get, you know, be like, darn you, Ozzy kid. By the way, I like the Ozzy team by far the most and out of all these guys. Um, but it, there's just a lot of things in this movie that just don't need to be there or could have done be done differently to make it better. And that's I, I would appreciate more fights. I would appreciate if another mech beyond Gypsy did anything in the movie. Mm-hmm. Because the other mechs, you only see them so they can show their one gimmick off. Well, yeah, uh, the we, Chinese team shows the little buzzsaw things off. We see and the, the, the twisty spike. leg thing. We see yeah, we see Twister do just once. He shows at the very end of a fight it has that it has like missile cannons. Mm-hmm. And I don't actually know what the Russians mech did. I think it, just uh, it did the punch him. the guy. That's it. Yeah, I think what, I think that's, that's really a, strong punches. That's what pissed me off. Uh, I'm looking at the trailer, not trailers for this movie, but the uh, the like the posters show off all the fucking uh, Jaegers, and the only time we ever see you know the uh, the other Jaegers do anything are in a, either a flashback for less than thirty seconds, or in the uh, second to final fight where they die off in less than ten minutes. Yeah, like, it, it's it's supposed to be kind of a big deal, because these are the only four Jaegers left. The Jaeger shut... But we don't know anything down. about them. We don't learn anything, we don't stick with them, so their deaths are meaningless. Like, the Australian team we know, because yes. we follow them throughout the movie. They're, like, yes. kind of the secondary group. But, like, we never actually speak to the Russian team or no. the Chinese team. We don't meet them, we don't... They could all be Hitler, for all we know. We know yeah. nothing about them, but the fact that they die. Yeah, D- but, which, and they look really over the top. Uh, at least the Russian team does. The Russian team was awesome. It, it, it ste- they looked like they stepped right out of a '90s movie to me. Yeah, that big old fucking bleach blonde hair and that weird oh, hairstyle yeah, they like had. Fucking uh, oh, what's her name? Fucking Red Sonia chick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I can't think of who she is. I can't think of her name right now. <laughs> I almost said Uma Thurman. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget Nielsen? Bridget Nielsen? Bridget Nielsen, yep. Yes! Boosh! I don't know how I managed to get that. But I'm <laughs> anyway, the one chick looks like Bridget Nielsen. Yeah, I mean, they should have spent a little bit more time on those guys before killing them off, you know, show them off some more, and get at least get some of an attachment to them before they die. But there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, You're just like, ah, there they are, and they're dead. It kind of just feels like, let's just make toys out of these. <laughs> yeah. Because I would have loved to have seen, because they mentioned, they're like, oh, the triplets have won, like, nine straight fights in China using the Thundercloud formation. Mm -hmm. And we don't get to see, like, I'm I'm still really curious what the fuck the Thundercloud formation is supposed to do beyond... Have buzzsaws come out of your hands. Yeah, like, (laughs) there's a point where, like, the the one they're fighting uses its hands and grapples with them. Like, oh, okay. So the third hand's there to cut into the monster while it's doing it. Third hand just fucking sits there while he gets thrown all over the place. It's like, oh, I don't know what the fuck the Thundercloud formation is anymore. I don't think they they sh- I think they showed the setup for it, but they never actually show what the, what it does. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see what it does because it's supposedly a big deal. And uh, the Russian one is supposedly a Mark One unit. Yeah, that like, thing's a beast. It's slow as fuck, but the thing's a tank. Yeah, so I'd have loved to have seen what that does, but yeah, you don't get to see it. Because like that thing's basically a boxer. Mm-hmm. You know, that thing's just there to pummel you into submission. But yet, it punches one guy, then gets his ass blown up. Yeah, more or less, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I like the fight scenes. I just thought there were few and far between. And the, uh... The talk- action's great. I, I yeah. cannot say. There are some really, like, there's a, a flying, uh kaiju who uh, picks one of the mechs up and is flying over the city just dropping them into the tops of buildings as yep. it flies across like really cool shit like that stuff that you can tell Guillermo del Toro probably had a vision he's like I want these actions it's really cool looking. but it looked a little funny shit. missing its tail <laughs> it, 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 it's just it's, it's good action for the most part I, I can't think of a lot of times I was like this is just fucking uh, this is awful because it's not shaky cam it's clear you're able to s- you know, it's tough to see some things just because a lot of battles happen in the water at night. So yeah, the see, darks, the, the colors kind of don't blend themselves well. But. I was talking to uh, Tyler about this movie uh, this morning, and I'm like, uh, see, even this movie gets it right uh, when it comes to protecting the people versus Superman. I was like, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> they still... They did all, most of the fights 
in the fucking ocean. In the ocean or in the harbor. Like, a fight does go into the city at one point, but it starts off when it first enters into Tokyo or Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. The, they take the fight to the harbor. So it's still in the city, but not, like, metropolitan area, yeah. you know? Uh, the city definitely has a lot less collateral damage than Superman, uh, Man of Steel. I, I actually do think this movie, less people died in this movie than Superman. Probably. <laughs> I feel like Hong Kong could much easier reconstruct itself than Metropolis is going to have to after Man of Steel. I don't know. Lex Luthor's got a lot of money. I just feel like it'll be easier <laughs> to fix. Like, all you have to do is, like, all right, fix that building over there, fix that one, buy, buy, that, new, buy that guy some new fucking office clicky clack ball thing. And, uh, <laughs> no, because it wasn't damaged. It's perfectly fine. I think fine. they broke that building afterwards. <laughs> did they? Oh, yeah, they did, because the uh, kaiju pushed them through it. I think, yeah. yeah, I think so. But um, it's funny, is that when, like, when you see them being pushed through buildings and stuff like that, the buildings are empty, though. Yeah. Because before every fight, there's a uh, basically a, an, air war, an, uh, air, uh, an air siren, an air raid siren that goes off that, allow, that lets people go into these underground bunkers, which they established in, the other, in another scene. Thank you. Uh, but <laughs> it was with a character I didn't give one shit about. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, one one thing I just want to bring up. Sure. Because it was very strange to me. I got two points, and then I think I'm done. <laughs> All right. Uh, this will be my last one. I just need to point out, because this is honestly one of the weirdest, maybe one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. There is a kaiju they kill, and they're examining its body, and they realize, oh, this kaiju is pregnant, which I don't get, because they explain that they're kaiju clones. clones to begin with, so I don't know why you'd send in one that's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless that was, like, a weapon of it. It just uh, poops out more of it as it's flying. But the weird thing is, because it's pregnant, the embryo basically comes out and tries to attack and strangles itself with its own umbilical cord. And I realize they're monsters, but it's still really uncomfortable to basically watch a stillbirth happening. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of those scenes, it's like, I, I kind of get what you're going for, but this is really <laughs> unsettling right now. <laughs> Wrong placement for that movie. Yeah, I was like, I couldn't just someone blow its head open with a tank? Why do I have to watch it literally strangle itself with its own umbilical cord? Yeah. So there, that, that's you win some, you lose some with this movie. <laughs> but um, okay, we're going right to the ending for these for my two uh, nitpicks here. Well, not nitpicks, but questions. Um, they established in this movie that the only way to go through the throat is with the corpse or the DNA of a kaiju. Uh-huh. Because the, the throat recognizes what's going through it. Because they've uh, attacked the throat before, and it just shoots whatever they put at it back out. It rejects it. It rejects it. Um, so, they go through the throat, holding on to the, uh, the body of the uh, Type 4, or Type 5 that comes out. Um... Oh, by the way, speaking of that fight scene, I love when that uh, when the other one detonates itself. Uh, the Aussies, the striker, mm-hmm. detonates himself, and it created that uh, vacuum, or not vacuum, but a dome of actual air, oxygen underneath the water, and you see the fish fall down. Yeah. I got confused when I saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, that's what's happening. I actually really like that. Um, but, moving on. Uh... As I said, they they fought, they use the body to go through the throat, and they get down the they get down to the bottom, or on the other side of the uh, throat in the alien planet, right? And uh, he ejects uh, Mako's uh, life pod basically because she's passed out or something like that during the fight. Yes. And uh, she goes through the throat, comes back out, and then he detonates uh, Gypsy. Uh, as he ejects and he goes out. Um, how do they get out if they needed the DNA of a fucking kaiju? I understood Mako, I think, because she he lets her out basically as soon as they get through. Uh-huh. But what I did not get at all is how he makes it out, because that happens, like, five minutes after. I was like, how long is this fucking gate open for? Yeah. <laughs> like, you think because the gate it. can't open without a kaiju in it. Yeah. There's no kaiju in it. Because they bring that body with them. 
They used that to get through it. How they? How the fuck did they get out? Yeah, it, it, that was one of those things I was just like, I don't really get how this works. Like, how long could the, the kaiju gate open for? Like, I also find it weird that they never tried this, too. Like, the bigger reveal to me, because there's two reveals they find by melding with um, a kaiju brain. This is one of them, is that you need to be able to go... It needs to recognize a kaiju DNA for the gate to open. Correct. Yeah. The second is that... Uh, what happens before this is they find out uh, that the kaiju are essentially not... They're sending in, basically, soldiers. These aren't predators. These aren't monsters. These are things designed to destroy major cities because these this, this civilization on this world is coming to our world uh, because it's taken it over and we've basically terraformed our world enough that they can take it over and then they can use it as a sustainable society. Mm. That, to me, was a bigger, like, twist than you have to have a kaiju to go through this <laughs> gate. I was like, well, fuck, did you guys ever try that? Did you ever just strap a bunch of dynamite to a fucking kaiju corpse and push it in the water? <laughs> Did you ever try to see if that works? Like, did you never think, like, maybe it doesn't open for us both ways? Like, Oh, I, that's... Go ahead. It, it, it just seems strange to me that they never conceived of that. Um, one thing, uh, this isn't the other nitpick thing that I had, but, um, they cancel the kite, the, uh, the, J the Jaeger, uh, program to build a wall. Yeah, that was weird. Why? <laughs> and you know what's funny? It's like when they we actually see the uh, the kaiju attack the wall. It's not even as big as them. No, it's it goes up to their waist. They can fucking like you know just uh, vault over it and they're through. Yeah, no, it's not like a t Attack on Titan where like these are walls billions of times taller than the giant, and just one happens to show up. It's bigger. Just one shows up like a regular Category Three, and he's just like, <laughs> "That's adorable, bro." <laughs> yeah, he just headbutts through it. Yeah, then there's like. Because these, we know that the the mechs are several like megatons worth of steel. Like they're yeah. huge. They're roughly. But uh, the, I, th these walls are basically just walls of steel. That's it. It's just steel, steel and presumably stone. filled with concrete. Yes. I. They they didn't have any. It didn't look like they had any defense mechanisms on them. It's just a wall. I I don't understand why they did all that shit. But, uh, getting back, okay, to my other point that I don't understand, um, I hated the ending of this movie. The very, very ending of this movie. Um, she, uh, they both come up, uh, she wakes up, uh, she ejects from her, or she leaves her, uh, life pod. She swims over to, uh, Raleigh's, or Riley's, whatever you want to call him. Uh, pops open his hood and, uh, the top of his, uh, life pod, and, uh, she feels for a pulse, she doesn't feel one. And, uh, basically she coddles them. Everybody else is sad in the, uh, briefing room, and, uh, he basically says, you're, uh, the, uh, Riley ends up, Raleigh ends up saying, uh, you're squeezing me too tight. And I'm like, wasn't he just dead? Did the power yeah, of that, love bring him back? That's super smolty that you're, you're either gonna like it, or you're just like, well, that was super weird. Yeah. Because it does, like... It they comes point out, out that the the sensors on the thing might be broken, but then it, like, and you're like, oh, maybe the sensors are just broken. But she felt for right. a pulse. But she went for a pulse. So <laughs> if, like, if that's the scenario, then she's just an idiot who can't find a pulse on a person. Well, I don't know if they tried to do it as a callback to the one scene where they're like, let's check for a pulse, and they just blow up that the fucking was corpse. An awesome line. Where it's <laughs> like, it may be dead, but let's check for a full a pulse. Boom! 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 No pulse. <laughs> I groaned at that too, but I I, I didn't think it was nearly as bad. Way. I didn't think it was nearly as stupid as as oh, the other no, things. Oh, that line was I... fucking glorious. <laughs> it was so cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things in this movie where I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'd see it again. Uh, but I wouldn't see it again in the theaters. I, well, actually, no, I, I'm not going to say that because I am going to see this again in the theater. Not because I, you know, love this movie, but because I want to make sure my opinions are what they are. <laughs> That's your true yourself. I want to make sure that I'm 100% sure on this movie because, you know, 24 hours, you know, going a whole day without sleep, 
will affect your mood going into a movie that's two hours and 11 minutes long. Oh, yeah. Because I think, I don't know if, uh, did this movie have, uh, I, I thought this movie was very talky. Did it feel that way for you? As in, the first act is where I was kind of like eh, on the movie and I was really negative on it. And that's where I think a big bulk of the actionless talking comes in. It's mm-hmm. kind of once the second act starts, the things... It, it is a lot of talking. There's there's not a great ratio of talking to action, but I can understand why. It's uh, cheaper to, you know, shoot somebody talking and create a narrative that way than to just do everything with a bunch of CGI fights that are ultimately going to be 100% computer animated. By the way, that first kaiju attack, uh, or the one that they show uh, against uh, San Francisco, I believe it was, mm-hmm. um, that CG looked terrible. Like, where they show him ripping the bridge in half, and you see the, the cars on the bridge fall down. Uh, that looked terrible. But the rest of the movie looked great. Just that one scene looked terrible to me. Uh, uh, just the stuff of the bridge. I, I didn't think the kaiju looked any bad, looked bad at all. I just thought the animation of the cars and the bridge itself looked bad. Yeah, it's possible they may have been like, alright, the kaiju looks great. Oh, shit, other stuff? Fuck it, who cares? Yeah. It just looked, it just looked too fake for me. Uh-huh. It's fucking CGI. It's it's gonna be fake. I know, but still. <laughs> like I want it to be less fake. Yes. They're giant monsters fighting uh, cities. Uh, okay. I think the only kaiju that I actually hated was the one that looked like a crab, because uh, the the kaiju's uh, were had great designs to them, to where they look. Uh, some of them look like things that are actually from Earth. You know, some look like a hammerhead shark. Some look like. Uh, one looked uh, like a gorilla. Yep, yeah, one looked like a crab. But the uh, the way that the they look, um, they don't look too much like the thing that they are supposed to look like. But the mm-hmm. crab just looked like a giant crab. That's it. Looked giant exactly crab. like a giant crab. Attack the weak point. So uh, that one threw me off. I didn't like that one as much. But every every other one, I was one hundred percent behind. Gotta love the fights in this movie. There you go. But yeah. Anything else left to say? Uh, probably so, but they're not coming up right now. <laughs> I like the fight scenes. I hated everything else. <laughs> well, not hate. That's too strong, mo- strong of a feeling for this movie. Um, I was just eh on everything You're else. You were displeased by everything else. Yeah. I, I, I felt like, I, uh, as I said, I think I said before, I felt like I, uh, this movie blue-balled me a lot. I definitely don't understand the the immense internet hype on this movie. Um, well, the people who've seen it love this movie. Yeah, there are people. I can who see why. Just love it. I can see why. I'm not, you know, yeah. talking down on anybody or something like that. I can see why it just wasn't what I was thinking it was going to be. Yeah, it, it is definitely one where I'm just like, I like this. I just don't understand, like. I think it's very similar. I have not seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, but it, it, it feels like a similar mentality of everyone in the internet just like, this is the most amazing movie ever. Because, I mean, this is a movie that appeals to nerds, you know? Hmm. The cheesiness is, you know, the Sentai, Kaiju, anime. It's it's all these things about Japanese culture that a lot of nerds really dig, and it has kind of the same stuff you'd also be able to like from, like, an 80s action movie and shit like that in there. So I can understand why people like it on the internet. It's just, it is really high. Like, I understand people being like, I'm shocked this is making less money than Grown Ups 2. But I also do feel like people need to curb their enthusiasm a little bit because this is a movie that spent a lot of money to appeal to a pretty small audience, to be fair. Well, this doesn't just go to that. I mean, this goes to, like, the, uh, you know, this will go to the alien invasion crowd, the, uh, uh, World ending crowd, I think. Uh, it just it reaches the more. Apocalypse is canceled. I hated that line. I still hate that line. <laughs> that speech was terrible too. I was hoping it was gonna be bigger than what it was, but no. <laughs> it just kind of fell flat on me. Yeah. But overall, yeah. Uh, if you like giant monster movies, this might be a good movie for you. If you can uh, deal with all the other subplots that you know, don't necessarily need to be there. Um, but if, uh, if you're still on the fence about this movie, just rent it. It's, it, it, it'll be a good solid rent. Uh, Chris, you gave it a B plus. Yeah. I, I sincerely enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. I absolutely had fun with it. Um, 
it, you kind of I do think it's something that if you're not in the mood for it, I think that is going to hurt it because so much is carried on the emotion of the movie. It's not a smart movie. It has no by far is it not a smart movie? Yeah, it's a very dumb movie. Um, there's no point to be made in the movie whatsoever. There's no great symbolism or anything like that. It's just action and stuff that's silly and you're you're kind of caught up in the emotion of like this is so over the top. This is such a wacky movie. There's no moral and let's do this together. No, not really. <laughs> Cuz they don't do it together. Everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's uh and he doesn't do it together. He sends her away before she has any choice in the matter. <laughs> he does it by himself. He does it entirely by himself. <laughs> No, in fact, uh, the, movie hold on. Basic, the movie basically ends <laughs> the exact same way Independence Day does, where they send the ship down there, and the big alien's looking at it, and it realizes what's happening. <laughs> exactly, like, I didn't make that like, connection. It does like a little, oh shit face, and it... The alien even some, looked like it. Yeah, and somehow, a little bit. somehow, fucking Raleigh's little fucking lifeboat outruns a nuclear explosion. I don't understand how that happened, but whatever. Well, it only it had five. I think it was five seconds to get away from there. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, it doesn't have much of a lead on everything else there, but he makes it out. Yeah, there was something that just came up that I wanted to say, but now I just completely lost it. Now that I realize that this movie's basically got the same ending as Independence Day. Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the exposition dump for today, uh, for this week. Uh, next week we are doing. <sighs> R.I.P.D. Don't act so fucking depressed. It's going to be fun. I hate you. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Why do you hate me? It's going to be fun. I, um... I doubt it. But, uh... <laughs> thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week for our, uh, R.I.P.D. It's going to be fun. Good night. Look at, uh, to me, they took this movie very seriously. To me, it came off they were trying, they, it was trying to take itself seriously, but yet still make fun of itself. And I don't think this movie did it that, it did it that well. I, I think... Because I, it was, uh, there was a lot of groaning moments for me in this movie. To where there I, are a lot of those. There, I also had quite a few, like, so ridiculously stupid. It's like, I had actually had a laugh out loud moment in the movie uh, that we can get into a little bit later. But I, I feel like a lot of it, it's so... Like, it, it just, you have to be self-aware when you're writing these lines. Like, Guillermo del Toro is the director. I, I, I can't think of too many things of his off the top of my head. But, I, I mean, I haven't known him before to have the reputation of being a really bad director. No, but every once in a while, good directors put out a stinker. They put out a stinker, but I think this is intentionally a stinker because of it being a love letter to well. kaiju movies. It's... And having so many connections to anime as it is. I know one thing I do know about Guillermo del Toro is he reads manga. Mm -hmm. um, family or teams of uh, husband and wife sort of deal. Because they're more compatible with each other. Yeah. So uh, it, it all comes down to how in sync you are. The more in sync you are with your, your pilot, the more effective your robot is and the better fighting force you are. Which I actually like that gimmick. That it they, wasn't that a bad did. gimmick at all. No, it was, it, it was only kind of there, though. Like... Here's one of the things. This, this isn't getting too much into spoilers. I guess maybe it will. So maybe, maybe I'll hold off on that. <laughs> so, but no, I, I do like the gimmick for the most part. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. Uh, it didn't to me. It didn't feel forced. No, no that it that it had to do it. I I thought there were other things that happened in this movie that felt way too forced. But well, this thing, I was pa I was I was passing on. I was like, all right, this is okay. I Even though it's only seven years ahead of our current time schedule, I don't think that's possible, but okay. <laughs> I feel most of the stuff that comes off as forced is, I think, by and large, intentional. I really do think I they're don't trying know. to get... There's some of it I think is unintentionally funny, but there's some of it that's to just me, so stupid. They took mm -hmm. And that, I remember when we re-meet Raleigh, he mentioned it's been five years since he's piloted. So I can't. I, I'm trying to remember. It's between the years, the year, It's be, either seven or about twelve. It's somewhere. Yeah, it's either seven average. or twelve years. I, I'm I'm gonna go with twelve because I think it's you know, uh, 2020 is where uh, Raleigh is actually doing his piloting, and then five years after that is when he rejoins. By somewhere. Else. So I think it's about twelve years in, but uh, basically to combat the uh, the kaiju, 
we created the uh, Jaegers, which are basically giant robots of awesome killy fighties. Yeah. And basically the whole story is, ba uh, you know, them trying to combat these aliens. Dimensional beings, whatever the hell you want to call them. Yeah, and there's different teams. The whole way the Jaeger works is that it has pilots, mm -hmm. uh, but one pilot wouldn't be enough. It's too much of a strain on the neural system because they mimic the, the user's movement. So two pilots basically mind merge with one another. Yep. And that's why a lot of the teams that you'll see are teams of brothers, teams of... are in the right mindset where you enjoy the fact that it's kind of cheesy and smaltzy all over the place, then you enjoy it. When we get to the spoiler half of this, remind me of the Sharknado connection, and I'll even make that connection deeper. Yeah. Because <laughs> they pull off some of the same shit. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's, yeah, there's, like, moments that are actually identical yep. between the two movies. Yep. Um, I hope you're thinking of the same part I am, too. I probably, yeah. <laughs> um, but... It is... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to go down to the description of this movie, but uh, basically this movie is about a uh, dimensional rift opens up in the Pacific Ocean uh, between two world or the world of Earth and this other, this alien foreign dimension. And uh, over the next, I think it was what, 20, 20, 20 years? I think it's seven years. Seven or 12, because they mentioned being in oh, they go seven of the Kaiju War. Yeah, they well, they did a... They did 2020, then they do like five years later or something like that, because after... That's not true. I know they mentioned it's being in the middle of the Kaiju War. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. All right. So, uh, Friday I ended up seeing Pacific Rim. Chris, you just saw it today, right? Yeah. About three hours ago. Three hours ago? Oh, oh yeah, four. yeah. I forgot. Somewhere on that side, yeah. I... Joe, no. <laughs> I'm mixed about this movie versus everybody else who just fucking who's fangasming over it. To be honest, I'm mixed. Uh, the quickest and most unspoiler way to say it is: this is a very silly, stupid anime. Essentially, it, it, oh it's, yeah, it's not a movie to go into expecting. A lot of thought, and it's just something you go in to see a lot of action in it. And you know, know what? what? Honestly, there's you know not even this, that much action in it either. You know what this movie is? This movie is Sharknado with a budget. Yeah, it's just it's really stupid. It's really silly. And if you're